I'll tell you what, you're under arrest, so get out of the car. Get out of the car. What am I under arrest? Disorderly for? conduct, get out of the car. Alright, you're free to go. Because I was going to try to talk to him afterwards and ask him not to put this shit on YouTube. A lot's happened in the last few months since the false arrest at Thousand Trails. This video gets you caught up on everything, including the complaint I filed with the sheriff and their response, the seven charges Yavapai County Sheriff's Office filed after the video went viral, how I was declared a terrorist because of my YouTube channel, the motion to suppress, motion to dismiss, and the start of trial, three charges that were dismissed by the judge, and then the state appealed on a technicality, and now we're going back to trial. I also did a FOIA request and got back more body cam that I'll be going over in future videos. The false arrest happened on the 8th, and I filed the complaint the next day with Lieutenant Johnson of the Yavapai County Sheriff's Office. I went over what happened the previous day, and that based off of the circumstances, the first two officers to approach escalated the situation, violated the Fourth Amendment regarding search and seizure, as well as make a false arrest for disorderly conduct. I got a response from Lieutenant Johnson 11 days later on the 20th of the month. I wanted to let you know I reread your email below and reviewed the body ward camera footage and the deputy's report. I will be addressing the things which should have been done differently. I responded back the same day and said thank you for the update. May I please know what training will be reviewed and with what officers? Lieutenant Johnson responded the next day. I will review civil rights issues and communication slash de-escalation skills with the first two deputies with whom you spoke. Our agency is also developing additional classroom and scenario-based training on de-escalation and civil rights issues for the patrol deputies. I again responded back the same day, the 21st of the month, and said, If I understand correctly, your officers violated my right to be secure in my property, escalated the situation, committed disorderly conduct and assault, but are not facing any discipline and will only be reviewing training. Clearly, Johnson wants this swept under the rug. No response from Lieutenant Johnson. I follow up a week later on the 27th of the month and say, I'd like to escalate this complaint if you are not going to respond to my question. What are the next steps I need to take? Internal affairs or what? May I please have this information? Again, no response from Lieutenant Johnson, but something very interesting did happen the same day. This is tyranny and corruption at its finest. Lieutenant Johnson emailed Captain Tom Boltz, and with no new information except for the YouTube video going viral, completely reversed his decision. He writes, I reviewed the body-worn camera footage from this case and the subject's complaint email. I believe the complaint is unfounded and the deputy's actions and threatened actions were well within well-established case law and state statutes. He goes on to say, at multiple points, they would have been justified in using more force against the complainant when he failed to follow their lawful orders in violation of multiple state statutes. More force, huh? Well, I'm sure they would have broke my window, but if these two ever arrest me, they better thank me for letting them. So Lieutenant Johnson reversed his decision with no new information. What else did he do? Johnson incorrectly cites Pennsylvania v. Mims and Maryland v. Wilson. You'll see coming up shortly the judge agreed this was not a lawful traffic stop. Johnson then goes over second by second in the video and outlines all of the different charges he thinks they could charge me with, if this was a lawful stop. The crimes I supposedly committed were ARS 28622, failure to comply with a police officer. 13-2508, resisting arrest. 13-3102, misconduct involving weapons. 13-2412, refusing to provide truthful name when lawfully detained. And 28-1595, failure to stop or provide driver's license or evidence of identity. But Johnson's not done yet. He sends Officer Hooten back out to the Thousand Trails campground 21 days after the original event to interview this new cast of characters that you'll be getting body cam video of soon.
At this same time, Captain Tom Boltz gets his pink panties in a bunch and goes on a tirade emailing over 30 people, including all of Sheriff Northern Patrol, and tell them to check out Defendant's YouTube channel. Thanks for that, by the way, Tom. Interesting, I'm already a defendant, not a suspect. He also contacts Yavapai County Sheriff Office, Criminal Investigation Bureau, and asks them to work up a threat assessment on me. And finally, good old Tom contacts the local terrorism liaison officer, Brian Horan. I mean, what a name, right? But Tom advises Brian to have his officers be on the lookout for me. I guess I'm a terrorist now. We all know this isn't about law and order or justice. This is about two tyrants abusing their position and coming against a citizen with the full force of the government for their own personal vendetta. They know there's little chance for them to see repercussions for their actions, which is why we need to abolish qualified immunity and establish citizen review boards across the country. Okay, let's do a quick recap. On the 8th of the month, I get falsely arrested. I file a complaint on the 9th. I also upload the video of the false arrest to YouTube on the 9th. On the 21st, Lt. Johnson replies back to my complaint and agrees there were civil rights issues and unnecessary escalation by the first two officers. On the 23rd, the YouTube video of false arrest goes viral and the sheriff starts to receive phone calls. The 27th, I ask Lt. Johnson to escalate my complaint. Johnson doesn't respond back to me, but what he does do is reverse his decision from a week prior and email Captain Tom Boltz telling him the officers not only should have escalated, but should have even possibly used deadly force. A couple days later, on the 29th, Lt. Johnson tells Officer Hooten to go out and reinvestigate the incident from Thousand Trails on the 8th. You'll see how disgusting this guy is by leading the witnesses to make sure he can get them to say what he needs so he can file a complaint. And around this same time, Captain Tom Boltz goes on his little tirade. So given everything that's happened, I think we can guess what happened next. That's right. Seven charges filed and a warrant issued. The charges they ended up going with after their reinvestigation were two counts of disorderly conduct, two counts of threatening or intimidating, one count of resisting arrest, one of failure to provide ID, and one of failure to comply with a police officer. And two days after the warrant was issued, I was arrested while picking up FOIA documents at the local sheriff department. Johnson was so happy he sent out an email to the entire sheriff's department saying that they had captured the sovereign citizen terrorist Kem before the storm. Now you know I'm not taking any deals and we're going to trial, but before we do, I file a few pretrial motions. I filed a motion to compel evidence. The first time I met with the prosecutor, they said they were giving me all the evidence they had, and I knew there was more out there, so I just dropped this one first. I also filed a motion for judicial notice, a motion to suppress based off of Fourth Amendment violations, a motion to dismiss, and issued several subpoenas. Things started off positively, with the judge granting my motion to suppress based off of Fourth Amendment violations, and I immediately filed my motion to dismiss. Here's the order the judge wrote regarding the motion to suppress. The court finds that Yavapai County Sheriff's Office deputies intentionally and effectively restrained the defendant's freedom of movement when the deputies blocked the defendant's vehicle, verbally advised the defendant that he was under arrest, attempted to forcibly enter the defendant's vehicle, and then threatened to break the driver's side window. Despite the fact the defendant was not removed from the vehicle or handcuffed, a reasonable person in the defendant's situation would have considered himself arrested given the level of restraint imposed by Yavapai County Sheriff Office deputies under the present circumstances. The court further finds that at the time of arrest, Yavapai County Sheriff's Office deputies had no probable cause to believe the defendant had committed a crime nor did the deputies possess sufficient articulable facts or circumstances at the time which would rise to the level of reasonable suspicion. 
Yavapai County Sheriff's Office deputies unlawfully arrested the defendant without sufficient probable cause in violation of the defendant's Fourth Amendment rights. So let's get this straight. The judge and the 7 million people that watched the original video all seem to agree that this was an unlawful stop, but somehow the Sheriff's Department and the state prosecutor still think it's worth charging me. Okay, so it's the first day of trial, and the prosecutor sits in their side, I sit on mine. But before it starts, the judge needs to hear the motion to dismiss. And based off of the facts found in the motion to suppress, the motion to dismiss is granted. So three of the seven charges are already out. Those keeping track at home, that's 2-0. Me. The prosecutor is pissed. She's not going to be able to ask any questions about the stop they made on me and my truck. So even though they can't question about anything that happened at the stop, she puts up the lieutenant from the scene, and basically he gives his name and then gets off the stand. The next charming witness they call is the employee from Thousand Trails that started this mess, Ralph Kim Baker. Now I don't want to get into any details so that they have a heads up, but this guy has already perjured himself several times. While Kim Baker is on the stand, it comes out that the depositions the prosecutor was supposed to set up before trial did not happen. When the judge hears this, he stops the trial and sends us to the back where we can do depositions and then resume trial the next week. During this week, Little Miss Sunshine, Cynthia Giltner, the state prosecutor, took the opportunity to appeal the motion to suppress and motion to dismiss granted by the judge. She claims she should have been able to call witnesses at the suppression hearing. It's funny, I knew a suppression hearing is an evidence hearing and you should call witnesses, but she didn't. Okay, bye for now, Cynthia. <laughs> so the state files an appeal on the motion to suppress and motion to dismiss, which I didn't even know they could do, but I'll get into that in a minute. On the motion to suppress, the state argued they should have been able to call witnesses at the suppression hearing. She was just too dumb to know they could have. On the motion to dismiss, the state argued the motion to dismiss was granted premature and prior to the evidence being presented by the state, which is case law. In the appellate case, State v. Gasparilla, they found that the trial court must first have evidence, not merely arguments of counsel, on which it can base its ruling before it may rule on a motion to suppress. I wasn't shocked when I got the appeal back and the court found that the prosecutor should be allowed to have another suppression hearing with witnesses and then the judge, if he's going to grant the motion to dismiss, should do it timely. So the case is supposed to resume trial in February, but before that there's supposed to be an evidence hearing in January for the motion to suppress. I have a lot to post between now and then, including new body cam footage, a closer look at the FOIA information declaring me a terrorist, and new court audio. I really appreciate everyone that's helped support me in this. Links in the description if you want to contact anyone mentioned in this video or myself. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys down in the comments.